Yeah, good afternoon. Um, I have two topics uh, for this afternoon. Uh, first, I would like to start with uh, optimized recycling rates because um, the circular economy package has much to do with recycling rates. And then I would move, like to move forward to um, systems understanding what we already heard this morning quite often and how we can apply MFA in order to get this transition to a circular economy. Um, if we talk about recycling rates, um, it's quite clear uh, a recycling rate uh, can be between zero and 100 percent and the higher the recycling rate, the more effort we have to apply to achieve it. Uh, effort means energy, uh, auxiliary materials, technology, costs, and so on. And of course, if, if we know it's more an infinite uh, effort if we are close to 100%. So the environmental benefits of, of recycling um, have more or less this shape. Uh, so we have, of course, benefits if we start with recycling, but if it comes again close to higher recycling rates, the high effort that we have to um, <coughs> take to achieve these high uh, rates uh, are, uh, will then result in a lower environmental protection or environmental benefit. So we have somewhere an optimum. And um, the problem with this optimum is uh, we don't really know where is this optimum and it's difficult to determine, but as uh, decision makers, of course, we have to make sure that if we fix recycling rates, we should try to be always left of very close, but left from this optimum and not on the right side, because then we have more effort and no environmental gain. Um, once we had the possibility to really do this on a quantitative basis so we could make calculations. This was about cooling appliances, which is not very attractive, but um, at least somebody gave us money to do that. So um, what you can see is this is the average composition of a cooling appliance. Um, and um, so it, it, it has a certain amount of aluminum, copper, iron, glass, polystyrol, and others. And if we start to recycle, only the aluminum, for example, of such a cooling appliance, we have certain savings or let's say gains uh, with respect to energy and um, savings of CO2 emissions expressed as cumulative energy demand and global warming potential. And if we start also to uh, recycle the copper and the iron and so on, we have even more savings. But as you can see at some point, if we start also to recycle the poor form, uh, which contains CFCs um, or, and also the polystyrol, you don't have any more uh, savings or advantages. But on the other hand, if you start recycling the pure form, for example, s a small amount of these CFCs will escape and this uh, has this a negative impact uh, expressed here as the ozone depletion potential. So here you can see it, you, if you have a certain recycling rate, you have advantages, but if the recycling rate is too high, maybe you get or you come already in the area where you have uh, disadvantages. And this was more or less the case in those days in Austria. The study is already a little bit old. It was done in 2007. So I guess this was around the year where in Austria the recycling rate was increased from 70 to 80 percent and our um, so our result showed that this was not <coughs> a very good decision in those days but of course um, it's not so easy um, the real curve here um, it's different for each type of waste it's different for paper for glass for cooling appliances for cars for construction materials um, it's also a function of the type of recycling technology. Of course, if you get or if you develop a better recycling technology, then the shape of this curve again will change. It's of course um, a function of the price of the primary resources and also a function of the, let's say, of the technology of the primary production process. So altogether, we have many different curves and I would say generally we don't have an idea about the shape of these curves. B 
because we, we have not enough investigations on that. And what we have to know is that this curve is somehow a moving target because of all these functions, um, different functions here. So it's difficult to really fix a wise and optimized recycling rate and much knowledge is required to do that. So my first conclusion on the first point is a higher recycling rate is not per se better. And uh, we need a really profound understanding of the system of the waste flows and so on if we have to determine the optimal recycling rate. On the other hand, we have to know that recycling per se is not the goal. Um, if we talk about uh, ecologic uh, ecological aspects of sustainability, then the goals are protection of man and the environment and conservation of resources. And uh, recycling is only a means to, to maybe achieve this goal. But I would say um, there is much more than just recycling and, and fixing recycling rates. And I would like to show this with the example of phosphorus. Um, I selected phosphorus in Austria because Austria is quite close to my office and um, phosphorus because it's a critical resource um, it cannot be substituted um, the EU also classified it as a yeah, um, critical resource this is the Austrian phosphorus system and of course it's much too complex now to, to discuss that here in, in detail but um, I've just wanted to to show you with this slide, one can do this. Uh, we have quite good understanding of the phosphorus budgets in Austria. And we did it not only for one year, but we did it um, backwards. So we, we produced the time series from 1990 to 2013. And this time series and uh, uh, produced a lot of understanding of system understanding and this is uh, something what I think is very important um, some key results are for example we lost large amounts of phosphorus in the agricultural soils because the Austrian farmers are over fertilizing uh, we use for example a more or less similar amount of phosphorus for landscaping where the phosphorus has no um, uh, has no benefit no advantage um, we eat too much, or mo most of us eat too much, <laughs> me at least. Uh, we have at least uh, 2,000 tons of phosphorus that we lose in green areas, be it in public or private areas, um, in gardens for example. Uh, we lose even higher amounts of phosphorus in landfills and in concrete, because sewage sludge, meat and bone meal is uh, uh, incinerated in cement kilns. Uh, we export a lot of phosphorus uh, via peerage wastes and we emit, of course, phosphorus to water bodies. So this is our understanding of the Austrian phosphorus budget. And uh, of course, Austria is very much uh, dependent on imports of phosphorus. We don't have any phosphorus uh, reserves or deposits in Austria. So what we did, or what I think what one should do in the next step is uh, to optimize such a system. Now we understand how it's working today, what is the situation today, and now we would like to optimize it step by step, action by action. At the moment we have only a small circle of uh, less recycling of phosphorus, high losses, everything comes from outside. And now we identified different actions in order to produce a kind of target system, an optimized system where we show this could be the optimum and this would be a goal where to go. And from this, um, we selected or we found 15 different actions um, and uh, they are quite uh, different from, from their, uh, let's say, from their uh, characteristics. But more or less, there are no recycling rates. Uh, these are actions like saying uh, mean and bone meal should not longer be uh, combusted in cement kilns. Uh, the farmers should change the fertilizing practice. We should optimize the bee content in the animal fodder. Actions like this. And um, 
the result of this is then um, that from the current system applying these 15 actions leads to an optimized target system and with respect to phosphorus in Austria the result is we could lower the import dependency from 2.2 kilograms per capita to 0.23 kilograms so minus 90 percent we could even uh, just um, come out with with uh, no <coughs> application of mineral fertilizer and also the emissions to water bodies can be uh, reduced uh, significantly so again here you would see it's not about recycling efficiency or so but it's again um, reduction of uh, consumption of a primary resource and reduction of emissions to the environment. And this brings me to my last slide. Um, so I think that the applica application of MFA and MFA is a very relevant tool of industrial ecology. Um, generates system understanding. This is also what, what uh, Daniel Müller said in the morning. morning. We need more, better systems understanding. Uh, it also serves to control data. I could not show that, but um, if you put data together in a balance, uh, in a material balance, it's, it really uh, gives you better understanding of the data and you can f find out systematically errors. Systematically errors. Um, it provides quite simply hints where the system has to be improved. So if you get this time series and you see that more and more phosphorus comes into waste management, then if you are responsible for waste management, then you have to know, I have to do something. If we collect more and more phosphorus, which is a good situation for waste management, but then you have more responsibility to really do something with it. Here you can see um, that's not so good because we lose a lot of phosphorus uh, in landfills and in concrete. So from such time series, you really understand better uh, where action has to be taken. And of course, MFA can be well or should be combined with energy flow analysis, with impact assessments and so on. The requirements for, for the future that I see is uh, we should come now from an academic to an, to an administrative administ administration level. Um, we have developed these tools and uh, I think they are quite ready to be applied now, but they should not only apply on the academic level, they should be now applied by, let's say, by EPAs or ministries for the environment, um, national offices and so on, you name it, uh, on a national level, but also, of course, on the EU level and on the supranational level. Uh, otherwise, uh, these things will not be realized and um, so they should be really now routinely applied in academics. Our role is just to, to give advice and to further um, uh, develop these tools, but uh, they should be applied on a broad uh, level. Thank you very much.